Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the show. Today is Monday, the 13th of July, 2020. And you know what? South Africa, I heard today. Well, let me open up the charts right here and take a look at this. South Africa it reintroduces a ban on alcohol sales to combat the virus pandemic. Now, I don't get the correlation here, but I can tell you guys one thing. We have very few things that, to, to help calm our nerves in these trying times, and, and a little drink maybe in the evening is one of the few things we have left. It says South Africa confirmed COVID-19 cases have exponentially soared in the last several weeks to over a quarter of uh, over a quarter of a million as government reintroduces restrictions to ban alcohol. Now, I'm going to tell you, this has been tried. It's been done before. It's been done in the United States of America uh, a long time ago. A lot of people don't know about it, but it was called Prohibition. And during those years, it was, a, it was an attempt that failed. Quite literally, what they did was they made alcohol illegal in the United States of America. And... The direct result from that was a tremendous uptick in, uh, well, you've heard names like, uh, like maybe, I don't know, maybe some people haven't heard of them, but names like Al Capone, Bugsy Malone, you know, these were prohibition era gangsters that arose massive amounts of, of organized crime in the United States of America during prohibition. And prohibition was what fed them, what put food on their table for these criminal organizations. And, you know, I mean, okay, prohibitions on other things, uh, but alcohol is such a big thing to put a prohibition on, say, okay, no alcohol, that it, what it does is it leads, to, it leads to these things breaking out. It's been tried. It's been done before Prohibition was ended, and the reason why it was ended, and crime went way down once Prohibition. And also, I don't get the correlationship between why having a drink of alcohol combats, and not having a drink of alcohol combats uh, the, the virus pandemic. What, what's the relationship to that? You know? I mean, I would think that that would help people stay at home. Because if they don't have it, they're going to go out looking for it. And when they're out looking for it, they're going to come in contact with other people and they might catch the virus. And they're not going to go looking for it if it's illegal. They're not going to go looking for it in all the normal places. They're going to go looking for it in all the abnormal places. None of it makes any sense to me. Uh, you know... This is kind of like a red line. The governments better watch out if they step across that red line too far because if they put too many restrictions on the people, people get fed up in the end. And, you know, we're, we're the people out there in the world right now, I mean, I'm fed up. I'm fed up with it all. I want this virus gone, you know, and at this point, I think the virus is mutated anyway into basically something that resembles a common head cold at this point, because I think it's mutated. I think it's went through a, a change where it's become less virulent and more contagious, you know? And I, I'm, I mean, okay, uh, I understand fighting the virus, but I just don't get this connection. Ban on alcohol sales to combat virus. <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get that. I, I can understand the, the, the use of face masks, I can understand uh, social distancing, you know, and any, anyway, uh, I, I, I'm going to move on to something else here. I'm going to take a look at silver today. We got a surge in silver, 1929. I haven't seen these prices in a long time. Have you guys? It's up 61 cents in a day. That's a big day for silver. Uh, it's looking good. It's looking strong right now. Uh, as long as the, as the markets keep being buoyed. <clears throat> Gold and silver is going to be buoyed, buoyed up, you know. And uh, the Fed's balance sheet's falling now, though, you know, and that's not a good sign. You got to beware right now, uh, because the Fed's balance sheet is falling, and what's basically they're doing is they're cutting back on the amount of money that they're putting into the system. You got to take that as a bearish sign, uh, even though the markets and everything right now is bullish. You know, and so you got to beware. You got to be a little bit tentative. 
out there. You just can't go in all hog, all hog. <laughs> but uh, we're seeing, oh, it's shooting up right now. It just went up even more, another two cents. Just so I've been talking. Let's take a look at gold. 1809. Now, gold has stayed above $1,800. Next stop, 2000. You know? The next stop is breaking its old high. That's the next stop. But you remember the last time silver was at its old high? I think it was around 1900. Uh, not silver, I should say gold. You remember when gold was at its old high, its old peak around 1900? Silver was almost 50 bucks. So silver's got a long way to go right now because gold's near its old high and silver's lagging way behind right now. Way behind. It's about half the price it should be right now. Uh, maybe even less than half the price it should be. Let's take a look now at cryptocurrency. Let me refresh the page. 274.4 billion. Now there is a little bit of a bullish signal here on cryptocurrency and it's the Bitcoin dominance which is at 62.2 percent. That's getting down kind of low and when the Bitcoin dominance is down kind of low it means that there's bullish sentiment within the alternative coins and that's a bullish signal for Bitcoin itself you know. Uh, it means that uh, that there is action in, in the cryptocurrency marketplace. Now, if you get the opposite of that, if you get a uh, a very strong uh, Bitcoin dominance, then that's a bearish signal for, for the cryptocurrencies. So we're seeing that bullish signal. Cryptocurrency is getting ready to make a big move to the downside or to the upside. I don't know. But it's getting ready to make a big move. It's been stable for a long time now in around 92 to 9600. It's 9261 today. Let's take a look at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And you know what? Oh, we're just up a measly 432 points is all. Uh, and, and half of America is out of work. <laughs> this is just so ridiculous. I can't begin to put in words how ridiculous it is. This, this, this market uh, uh, right now. It's so overboid and so overbought, you know. All the money's pooled into it. Uh, you know, there's an old saying, what goes up must come down. you got to really be careful with this market right now. Uh, even though she's buoyed and even though she could go higher, and even though I wouldn't bet against this market, I would certainly not try to short this market. You can lose everything. But I'm going to tell you, uh, you got to be real careful out there right now with this market because of, because of these facts, you know, the fact that it could it could really take a tumble and uh, but then again it could go up and and a lot of people out there are of the opinion well we don't want to miss the boat. Well, let's take a look now at crude oil. Crude oil is forty dollars and fifty seven cents, and it's up two cents on the day, which is basically nothing. It's been hovering around forty dollars lately for sweet light crude. Now let's take a look at U.S. Treasuries. We're seeing the yields rise today, but it's insignificant. We're looking at the U.S. 10-year at 0.643. It's up one basis point, and the U.S. 30-year is at 1.33, and it's up 1.3 basis points. So Treasury yields are uh, Treasury yields are not moving that much, you know, and uh, they're staying pretty flat. I don't think that they can raise interest rates. I don't think they can even normalize these rates. These rates are going to stay down near zero. And they might even move into the negative region pretty soon, you know. Let's take a look at the U.S. dollar index. You know what? I'm going to tell you guys. You cannot have a strong economy unless you have normalized interest rates. You know. Uh, there is another way you can have a strong economy, though. There is. I shouldn't say you can't. It's not, it's not impossible to have a strong economy. But you'll have an economy that's going through what's called a, a, the strength will come from what's called a crack up boom. That's where the strength will come from. Basically, overprinting the money will get the economy going. You print enough money and you pump it in and inject it into the economy, and the economy will start to pick up. But the value of the currency will go down like a stone. And then the economy will, will just basically die. 
then, you know, at that point, because what will happen is the money becomes value, what they call money, which is really currency, will become valueless. And, and the uh, hyperinflation then, after the crack up boom ends, and the hyperinflation actually comes, it destroys the economy, rips it to shreds. Uh, that's not the way you want to go. For, so for a real healthy economy, you have to have normalized interest rate policy. You know, for a real, solid, healthy economy that lasts. It, it's kind of like a sugar high, you know. For diabetics out there, they tell you to eat, eat foods that, that'll maintain your blood sugar all day. You know, and, and those are foods that last. But what happens if you eat a whole bunch of sugar, just raw sugar? Well, it'll give your body a rush for now, you know, it'll go in and... But the problem is, is on the other side, it'll drop you. And that's the way with a crack up boom. It'll give the economy a little bit of a rush, but it's like a sugar rush. And then everything falls flat. Whereas a real stable economy is like a healthy person, you know. It has normalized interest rate policy. They cannot normalize interest rate policy. The debt is too large. Uh, they would have to restructure the debt with some sort of a reset. And then what, what, what is that really all about? That's a default of the United States dollar, you know, a, a restructure because uh, it's a mess right now. It's a mess and there's no way out. And it's going to increasingly get worse until the whole thing just basically dies on itself. Let, okay, listen, guys. Thank you for listening. Like and subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. And we'll catch you guys in the next show. Bye-bye.